Hey, this is Jesse Canton. Man, I am so glad that you took the time to download this podcast. Listen, it's getting ready to be a blessing to you. It is power packed full of wisdom. Listen, as you hear this episode and you maybe you want to be a blessing to this podcast, well, you can hit me up on Cash App. Type in Jesse E. Canty, J-S-S-E, the letter E, C-A-N-T-Y, with the dollar sign, of course. And you can be a blessing. Anything you give will be appreciated. I thank you, and I pray that nothing but God blessings and his best be upon you. Take care. Hey, it's Jesse Catch with another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? Listen, it is Pentecost Sunday. Well, the day after Pentecost for me. You know what that means. It's the 50th day past Easter. It is the day that we commemorate in this, the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles in the upper room. Yeah, man, he came in there and took over and showed out. Well, this is a part of our Destiny series, and we're going to continue it. I like to call this one the Big Takeover. Can we talk about it? Let's do it. Yeah, man. Man of wisdom, man of wisdom. From the pulpit to the podcast, from the pulpit to the podcast, to the podcast, yeah. Jesse Canty. Pursuing my destiny. Pursuing my Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? This is your boy, Jesse E. Canty, episode number 73. And man, I'm ready to get into it. Let's do this thing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you be with me, God. Keep me focused. Heal me from my head to my toe, God. Bless the people, Father, that's listening so that they may hear the Holy Spirit speak clearly. Have your way in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Yeah, man. It is the call. This message is entitled The Big Takeover. I ministered a little bit on Facebook uh, live uh, Sunday morning about it, but I only just touched a little bit. I tip telling them come to my episode of my podcast. I'm going to get a little bit deeper in it. <clears throat> and I had to go this route. Number one. Woo, man, I'm telling y'all because I'm excited about this one because I love... <sighs> I love God. I love how God moves. <clears throat> I like how God uses me. Uh, and I like how God's method is when he comes, when he's dealing with his children. Uh, we've been talking about the Destiny series. This is another part of our Destiny series. I'm getting, I'm getting feedback on, uh, uh, the Destiny series. Anybody that wants to give any feedback to the series I'm talking about, the episodes you probably heard. <clears throat> or possibly the entire podcast, hit me up on jec247 at aol.com. That's our email, jec247 at aol.com. This right here gives a shout out on this episode to the people who are in Alaska. We got a lot of listeners in Alaska who's been listening to us. Thank you. I salute you. I appreciate you. Listen, again, this is part of our Destiny series. I'm excited about how God uses his people because the thing about it is this right here. I understand you cannot reach your destiny. Now, this one may seem a little bit churchy to you, but it's all good. I thought about it, prayed about it, talked over with my wife. She said, you got to bring the realness, Jesse. And I am a firm believer of God. I, I believe in God. I know I probably have some listeners who are atheists, uh, but you're not going to leave uh, as an atheist. I believe that as well. But I'm excited about it, man, because in order to reach your destiny, and y'all know I always say this, what is your destiny? It is fulfilling the plan of God and the will of God, or the will of God for your life. So in order to reach your destiny, I believe you have to be led by God. The big, the big secret into to 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 making right decisions in your life and heading to the place where God wants you to be is that you cannot do it on your own. Now I could talk about this all day long, so I got to keep moving, man. But you got to have a secret weapon, and the secret weapon is called the Holy Spirit slash the Holy Ghost. I want to talk about a few fundamentals because I may be entering, uh, introducing something to somebody who don't know much about the Holy Spirit. Uh, whether you call them Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, the Bible calls them both names. In fact, it calls them the Holy Spirit more than it calls the Holy Ghost. 
I remember somebody who used to argue and say, well, my Bible said Holy Ghost. When I said, and I'm like, no, your Bible said both of them. I said, but it's fruitless for us to argue because if you show me a ghost, I'll show you a spirit. And if you show me a spirit, I'll show you a ghost. In the in the Hebrew, uh, in the Hebrew, both of the, in the Greek, both of the names, uh, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, is the is the Paracletus. So you must understand that that means the Paracletus means the the one who walks alongside. What is the Holy Ghost? Or who is it? Ain't that's another principle. It's not is it. It's not what is it. It's a, it is a person. He has feelings. He is touched by the feelings of our infirmity. Understand that he's called the Holy Ghost. He is the comfortable, comfort, comforter. He comforts us. He guides us. He walks alongside of us. Now, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would predominantly come upon a person and then leave. The Bible also said that the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away the sins or cannot be the remission of the sins of the, of the, of the people. So you could not, uh, even with them sacrificing animals in the Old Testament, this did not satisfy God. It only what we call pacify God. It caused the people to be, when they died, they did not go to heaven. According to the scripture, they went into hell, but it was a gulf in hell. G-U-L-F, space, expansion, split. You had what they call Abraham bosom, which was literally the side of hell. That was no torment. It was paradise. It was there. Then you had the other side of hell that was tormented. So when people died, even the people who was uh, Abraham and Isaac, Jacob, all of them, they did not descend into heaven because, wow, how can they get to heaven without the remission of the sins? And the bloods of bulls and goats and animals could not do it. It only pacified God. It did not satisfy God. So they had to go in what we call the holding cell. <clears throat> and then Christ, this all the way along in the Old Testament, when it come down to Christ who came, when he entered in, Christ who was the Lamb of God, even though we know he was a human man, he was the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. The blood of bulls and goats didn't take away their sin, even though they offered it up, it just covered them. The Bible said that God said he winked at their sins. In other words, he acted like he didn't see it, but it was there. It wasn't, but he knew it, he could not. They could not go into heaven with that blood of bulls and goats. It had to be the son of the son of God, who was the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. He was offered up. He died, and when he died, he descended him up upon the most parts of the earth, led captivity captive, opened up the Abraham bosom side of hell, led, and pulled every one of them souls out of there who was led in captivity. And he preached to the other side, basically preached, which means proclaim, showed them that everything that was preached from Noah to et cetera, look at me, I am the validation, I am the uh, uh, authentication of one of the gospel that was preached even in Old Testament. Then he descended back up, grabbed his body, hung around for 50 days, we hear the Pentecost coming now, hung around for 50, 50 days, showed himself to many people with many infallible proofs, got on the cloud, descended back into heaven. Now when we die, we are in the presence of the Lord. All right, now what happened? It was in Genesis, you have in the beginning, God created heaven and earth and earth without form and void, et cetera. It says in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. This is the scene where God the Father created everything. Now, when you really technically read your scripture, you'll find out that Jesus had fellowship with the Father even from the foundation of the world. Uh, the Bible says that. So even though he didn't come and show up until the 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 the, the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, as a babe in the manger, he really was here already. And not only was he here and having fellowship with his father, uh, but we also believe he showed up in the Old Testament many times, a few times as well. So here you have God the Father showing up and on the predominant shift what we call the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He showed up in Genesis chapter number one and did predominantly the work in the Old Testament. Then you have uh, the second manifestation of God that showed up on this earth, which was God the Son. This was Christ. Christ showed up. You know how he came. Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will from 42 generations. He came down, the blood that was protected, the bloodline that was protected, Christ took on a natural body. God took on a natural body. He was also known as Emmanuel, which means God with us. So literally God came off the throne, though he stayed on the throne. 
in the personage or the body of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ uh, preached the gospel for three and a half years. He was about 33, 33 and a half years old. When he died, he yielded up his body, died, descended, resurrected. All of a sudden, when he got on the cloud, he says, why stand ye gazing up, looking at me, going back to heaven? And he basically said, what you see me do, you're going to do. That was the end of what we, I would say, God the Father had an eight-hour shift. Christ had an eight-hour shift. Now the last shift, eight times three is 24. It covers the whole dispensation of one day. Now when God, uh, the Son, is on the cloud going back to fellowship with his Father on the right hand, be seated. Now the Holy Spirit tags or clocks in and say, now is my time. So we're in the dispensation. I have to share all this with you. And yeah, it's going to be a big takeover part two. It's going to have to be. Uh, now we're in the dispensation where Christ take over. And uh, 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 now, well, excuse me, where the Holy Spirit take over. This is his dispensation. So we still have God the Father. We pray in Jesus' name, even though Jesus' shift is already over with. He came and done what he had to do. He's not coming again in that form of fashion. Not in that form of fashion. He's not showing up as no baby again. Next time he's going to return on a horse, when the saints going to be with him, and we're going we're gonna to fight his call Armageddon, etc. So now is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in Acts chapter number 2 and Acts chapter number 3, he came in. The disciples was told to go sit in the upper room and wait on the Holy Spirit. And they, tra they travailed and they waited on the Holy Spirit. There was a time when the Holy Spirit came in like a mighty rushing wind, took over the place. Every person, you know, well, me's and purs and the different ones in there, different pers uh, different nationalities was in there. And each one of them heard the Holy Spirit. Each one of them heard each other person speak in their own language. The Bible said it was cloven, which means divided tongues that sat amongst them. And the miracle was that he heard everybody speak in their own language. The Holy Spirit did not come in and hover over a believer like it would do in the Old Testament and make it his appearance. But it came in and he came in and sat on the believer. Listen to this, people of God. This is the first time or really the main time where you'll see that the Holy Spirit sat and embodied on the believer. Now the New Testament says, know ye not that your body, for the first time it can say this, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Which means it says another way, and that means your body is the dwelling place or the home or the tabernacle of the, of the Spirit of God. So God lives in us now that he did not live in us in a better mad fashion than he did in, in Abraham then. Now, if you want to get technical, which I'm trying not to do, God's spirit is in everything they got life. They got life. I want to get to my point. I don't want to get too technical on this, but I have to touch on it so you'll know we're not ignorant. God's spirit is in everything they got life because that's the only life giver in this universe or however you want to call it in the world. It's from God. But he did not feel anything, F-I-L-L, he did not feel anything until he embodied the believer, Acts chapter 2 and 3. And when he embodied the believer, now he became in fellowship with us. So what we have different than any other Old Testament saint is when we say the sinner's prayer and repent with a grieving heart and a contrite spirit, the Holy Spirit knocks on our heart and we yield Y'all know about yielding, and some of you, then again, you don't know about yielding according to the way you drive. But let me teach you a little bit about yielding. Yielding don't mean a stop. Yielding don't mean just stay there and say, now you have your way and you do what you want to do. No, yielding means you come out there and you get into the flow of traffic slash life, but you yield to the flow of it how it wants it to go. You yield so you can get out there without stopping your momentum. You yield, now we are called to yield our will to the Holy Spirit will. Or we can say it this way too. Now we are to yield our life to God, to the life of God. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. What did that mean? 
It's not what I want to do. It's what you want to do through me. This is a grown person, a mature Christian's talk when he can pray like that and say, God, you know I want this spouse. You know I want this house. You know I want this car. You know I want this healing. You know I want this child. You know I want this here, but this money, whatever the situation is. But nevertheless, if somewhere in your uh, infinite mind uh, that, 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 that you see is this is not best for me to have, I trust you and I yield unto your will. That's when you have the Holy Spirit living in you. He did not come to take you over as a robot and, and use you and you just sit back as a pastor and don't know what's going on. Uh, not only, uh, uh, God wants to work through you, but he wants to work. Not only God wants to work for you, but he wants to work through you. So the Bible talks about now, since the believer is invited with the Holy Spirit and he's sat upon every believer, now the Bible talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit, which means you must give yourself to the Holy Spirit or to the will of God moment by moment as a continuous activity. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. God has blessed us to have listeners all around the world. And I thought to myself, I said, maybe there's somebody that wants you to have a prayer request. I want you to pray with them concerning anything, your family or whatever it is. If that's be so, listen, drop me an email at jessecantypodcast at yahoo.com. J-S-S-E-C-A-N-T-Y podcast at yahoo.com. I would love to hear from you. I love to pray with you. And I want you to have a blessed day. Or let me say it this way, every day of your life, learn how to give yourself to God as a continuous activity, not only moment by moment, but day by day, episode by episode, situation by situation, situation. you are yielding yourself to God. You're becoming closely entwined with the Holy Spirit. You're intro, you're, it's almost like dating. It is like dating. You're learning the will of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. You're learning when God is, is um, uh, when God is not pleased. All right, let's use another illustration. Let's say you're, her, you're not, now you're not husband and wife, but you're dating each other. You got a girl you dating or you got a guy you dating, and we're talking about a, a legitimate relationship. Uh, you're dating, you, you, you know, you've just met them probably uh, uh, two days ago. You don't know their act. You don't know their attitude. You don't know they love much. They love their strengths. You don't know their weakness. You don't know their likes. You don't know their dislikes. Uh, you don't know their proclivities or anything. Uh, so you're looking at them and you're very sensitive. You're trying to be, be sensitive, but you don't know much of them. You don't know when they want to go, when they want to leave, where they want to stay. But after you have been redating them for some time now, one month, two months, three months, six months, two years, and y'all been together that type of time, you can look on your spouse's face or you can feel a vibe when they want to leave that room. They want to leave that, that, that reunion. They want to leave, get away from your family. They want to, you could just look and tell and you say, babe, are you okay? You want to leave? And you could just look and tell you are more sensitive to that connection because you have built a connection uh, that you have and you are deeply closely to one, close to one another. Likewise, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have more. I told you everything has a spirit, but it's different between having the Spirit of God and being filled with the Spirit of God. Having the Spirit of God is like a sponge that's damp. You have moisture. Being filled with the Spirit of God is like a sponge that's been soaked, baby. You are full of them, man. And you got to be filled day by day. And the one that's filled more is heavier. God going to get more glory out of your life. The word glory means weight. W-I-G-H-T. Understand when you're filled by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, he can lead you and guide you more. This is a mature man's relationship. Moment by moment, you are learning to give yourself to his will. You're learning to be very sensitive 
when God wants you to lean to the right, when God wants you to make a left turn, when God wants you to bless somebody financially, when God wants you to shut up, you're starting to be more sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And don't make no don't make no mistake about it. The act of giving yourself entirely to the Holy Spirit, he want, it means he wants to permeate, permeate your life. That means God wants to invade your life. I'm not going to use soft words. I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to invade your life. No, he don't. He wants you to give in to him. Yes, he do. But he wants to bring take you out your way. He wants to dominate your will. He don't, he don't want to come and make you shut up on your own. He wants your will to become his will. He's not here to negotiate. That's why I'm using these words. He's not here to say, give a little and I give a little. Okay, we'll compromise on this and I let you lust on here and I let you sleep with that person if you give me this here. That's not the will of God. The will of God is for you to change your will to become his will. Even Paul was so much convinced of this. Paul had to go back and use the illustration that he, I am a prisoner of the Lord. He says that I, I, it ain't even me no more. I got to do what he tell me to do. And then later on, he realized that you can go from being a prisoner to the friend of God, which is a better relationship. That means now he's not forcing you to do against your will because your will have become his will. And you have matured on the level where now that's your friend. And any man who's a true friend, you don't want to offend your friend. So the act of giving yourself entirely to the Holy Spirit allows God to permeate your life. It, allows, it invites God to dominate your will and for God to sanctify, which means to clean and set apart and allow your life to bring God glory. This is why I have to talk about it. This is why I had to say all of that in, in 20 minutes just now and show you how you cannot get, I believe, you cannot fulfill your God-given destiny without the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes you become or helps you to become that which is the ultimate will of God. It is the Holy Spirit that leads you and guides you and teaches you day by day. It is the Holy Spirit that teaches you and puts you on a route where you learn to be a focus on the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I'm trying to break it down in plain and plain words and layman talk, which means this, you have an inner navigational system down within your spirit. It's kind of relating to when it says, make a right in 60 yards, etc., stuff like that. The Holy Spirit will start speaking to you inwardly. And sometimes you can hear it through words. Hear him. This guy keep calling it, but it's a him. Sometimes you will hear him through words. Sometimes you will hear him just through an unction, just through a leaning. Ah, I got that one curtain, two curtain, three curtain. I got three doors set in front of me. Let's make a deal. I got three doors set in front of me. I get to choose what door is before me. But some reason I can't let go of door number two. That means it's the Holy Spirit drawing you, leaning you somewhere. And you learn to do this with allowing not Allowing it, you have to learn to do this by allowing your will to become his will. It's the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live the life that glorify God, to use us for his purpose. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 and 8 says a little something like this. It says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, for whom every father in heaven, excuse me, Father, for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named and according to the riches of his glory, that he may grant you to be strengthened by the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. See, I going back connecting the Trinity together that you can be rooted and grounded in love. And he may, that you may have the strength to comprehend, to understand with all the saints, what is the breadth, length, height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. When you are filled with the fullness of God, it should lead you to sinning less. 
when you are filled with the fullness of God, it should lead you to pleasing God more. When you are filled with the fullness of God, it should lead you to yielding and sensing and knowing your destiny more. It should not have you running around, as grandpa would say, like a chicken with his head cut off. You shouldn't be trying to guess what is the will of God when you're filled with the spirit. When you're filled with the fullness of God and day by day you're being filled again, you don't just reach to a level and say, well, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm done. I can pass that now. No, every day of your life, from the young Christian to the older saint who's been in this way for 75 years, you're still yielding to the Holy Spirit like a newborn babe. Every day you're saying, God, as I get ready to go out and clock in on this job or do what you tell me to do, lead me, guide me all the way. Without your help, without your help, I'll be like a ship without a sail. I need you to lead me so I don't make bad decisions. Let me know when you're trying to move me. Let me know when you're trying to speak to me. Let me know what is I what I should accept. Let me know what I shouldn't accept. And when I miss your will, bring me back to let me realize where I missed it then so I can learn of you. Let me give you a great illustration. I'm going to close this message out and I'm going to keep rolling to write part two. So if you listen to this and you got another time later on today, go back to this but the site and in part two, the big takeover uh, uh, is going to be released too. I'm releasing both of them today. I'm going to record it straight on because the Holy Spirit lead me right now. Uh, but listen to me, share out and turn out and show you how this one done and we'll pray and get it to the next one. My wife and I was just in SNS. I only give the story to the glory of God. Uh, every time, and I only share this with you for the glory of God, every time or most of the time, 99% of the time for the past year or two, when I go into SNS Cafeteria, which is a restaurant in Greenville, um, I pay for more than one person. I, I look around, I say, and I don't do it on my own. The Holy Spirit will speak to me, and I see somebody, and I say, take that ticket. Sometimes I hear it literally in my, in my spirit. Sometimes I'm led that way. And I'll talk more about that in the second episode. Well, I was I saw a couple yesterday that I did not know. Uh, it was three individuals at a table, two men and a woman. And I felt led to, to pay for those people's tickets. Now, mind you, I came into the restaurant yesterday uh, saying, okay, I'm not going to be paying for nobody today. Um, and that's just Jesse. This is a man. It's not trying to be cheap. I said, okay, I don't believe God will speak to today. I'm not going to pay nobody today. By the time I got through finished eating, I looked up and I heard, I felt the leading of the Holy Spirit draw me to that table. I told my wife, I'm going to pay the ticket. I looked around for the, 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 the waitress, their waitress. Their waitress was moving. She was working, man. And, and I knew either eventually she going to look up to me and we going to make eye contact and say, go get a ticket, please. It's a certain way I like to do it. I don't do it for fanfare. I can do it and get out of there and not even let know who did it. Well, the woman was working so feverishly, man, she didn't even make eye contact with me. Uh, so I knew the flow wasn't going the way I wanted to go. So I waited, and then I'm sitting there looking. I told my wife, well, you want to say something? She said, no, I will let you say something. I said, well, this is what I'm going to do. And I opened my mouth and says, Holy Spirit, if this is you, then God, I'm going to give you two more minutes, and I'm out of here. Open up a door. If it ain't you, Lord then I'm not going to do it. I don't want a Jesse idea. I don't want, I want a God idea. I said that just like that openly where my wife could hear me. Only one. It wasn't 30 seconds later that the lady who was sitting at a table across from us, the one we were waiting on, it wasn't 30 seconds later, she turned around and looked at my wife and I and said, I follow y'all on Facebook. My wife mouth dropped, my mouth dropped because she just heard me say, Lord, I give you 30 more seconds. If you don't make some type of way for me to have contact with these people, and I was thinking more predominantly is that their waitress coming over there near us, uh, then I'm out of here and I won't do it. And it must not you be leading, not, it must not be you that's leading me. And all of a sudden that woman opened up her mouth and it amazed my wife and I, even though we know in God how he can be real. But that was another episode that God showed me this was not just you. It is me leading you who to pay, who not to pay. And I want to talk about more of this in the second episode. 
it was connected to my destiny. I'm going to end it here. I'm going to pick it up the same place on part two, being led by the spirit of God. But love, that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to become more sensitive to his presence. His invisible, intangible, intangible uh, spirit that's inside of you. You don't have to walk to staying alone. The Lord will lead you and tip you off for you to reach your destiny. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the Holy Spirit makes himself plain, makes himself plain to these the believer in myself as well in a fashion that we never experienced before. God, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Draw us closer to you. Help your will be done in our life and not our will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go to part two. Love you. Hey, business owners, this is Rashad Brown with Swipe Fast, located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are excited to be partnering with Jesse E. Canty and the How Bad Do You Want It podcast. Since 2017, Swipe Fast has been helping business owners like you save up to 99% in their debit and credit card processing fees. So if you process business to business or business to consumer payments, we have solutions that will meet your needs and would love to hear from you. You can reach us at swipefast.com forward slash save. That's swipe, spelled with the Y, or contact us at 1-800-597-0713. Don't forget to let us know that Jesse E. Canty sent you. Have a blessed day.